Hello guys, welcome back. Today we will be talking about whether or not the market has bottomed up and we have discovered mm. a few things that might be pointing in that direction. So keep watching until the end. Now, as usual, none of what we say is financial advice, NFA, um, you know, purely educational. Right guys, before we begin, just to let you know, on the 1st of December, 8.30 p.m., we will be reviving our deep dive series. And guess what? It's going to be on gloves. So if you want to hop on the early bird pricing, you need to sign up in the link or the comments and make your purchase before the 27th of November midnight so that you can get a 30% discount. Okay, guys, so we will start with why we think that some of these indicators is uh, proof or at least uh, pointing in the direction that we have a market bottom. Mm. So Jonathan, you want to explain what we're looking in front of us? Right. So this is the market uh, trading participation yeah. from uh, retail investor versus local institution mm. versus foreign. So uh, if you check out this red box that I've highlighted, right, this is actually the first half of 2022 yep. uh, stats. And you notice that the uh, this line over here, uh, this line is actually representing the retail's average daily value traded. Means right. every day, what is the stock value being traded? La. And yes. you look at the number, right? It's actually like dropping. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, this is because this is just the first half only. We still don't know what's the second half yet. But um, if you look at the uh, number of partic partic participation, right? On the retail percentage over here, you right. notice that there's actually a quite a drop la, in it. Yeah. And uh, it's actually pretty stagnant for institution, I would say, uh, although it did drop a bit. Uh, for foreign also, it's like, it's pretty stagnant, right, but yeah. yeah, it's quite flat. But this actually kind of signifies that uh, maybe the retails are actually not really uh, investing in the stock market as yeah. aggressive as in, twen in 2020 and 2021. Yeah. So uh, it's actually a pretty uh, interesting stat. Right? Yes, yes. 60% drop. Yep. And another interesting stat that I actually found was this derivative market. So there's actually a lot of interest in uh, investors actually pouring money into the crude palm oil futures. Right. Actually, I don't really know why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I also never, I never invested in derivatives before, but it's interesting to see that even though with the market being quite, looking quite bloody and quite bad, right? But there's still interest in futures, uh, especially in the crude palm oil. Maybe yes. it's because crude palm oil has is in the bottom of the cycle. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a reason why also. Okay. So, which is why maybe they see that there's a undervalued gem inside that and hence they actually invested in this. Yeah. And, uh, okay, another strong evidence that I want to highlight why retail investors is actually pulling out for the market, right? Is that you look at the net buy position is actually pretty less compared to uh oh if let's say assuming that uh the entire year is going to be the, the same amount as the first half let's say that so it's just times two only it's about 3400 it's still going to be less than 2018's uh, yeah. amount of money and also the amount of cds that is open is actually getting lesser it's like minus 60 percent that's crazy man shout yeah. out to my uh, broker friends yeah yeah so uh all, all of these are actually a pretty interesting stats that actually shows yeah. that there's not much interest investing in the current uh, stock market right now. And I think in the next segment, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Google trend and yeah. for each of the uh, asset classes. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys, if you didn't know, we have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where you can apply for, where we level up your stock investing based on tailor-made solutions. If you're interested, you need to apply. Not of all of you all will get into an interview. It's only 20% of you all will do it and even fewer will get to hop on the program. But if you're confident that you can qualify, you can click on the link and fill in your details in the comment section or the description. Okay, so one way we like to look at whether things are in trend or not is to use Google Trends, yep. right? We can track people through their searches mm. and we can see, right, the Thing peaked in 2019, 2020, uh, in yes. interest, the interest, the term like, stock market, yeah, stock which market. you use, yep. and then now it's down. So of course this is in uh, Malaysia, yep. right? So yes, um, I think crypto- 
it's also yeah so if, similar. if you look at it right that's in 20 uh 21 yeah when everything is like going up and hence the term crypto is actually yeah. pretty in trending uh, but what is weird is like why is there this in 2004 yeah uh, actually wasn't even there born then so anyway yeah <laughs> but uh maybe it's because of the data being skewed i don't right. know like, like some false error but then uh this is another interesting step right. which is the recession. recession so uh whenever there's a recession right, everybody start to like google that kind of like keyword mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you see like there's like global financial crisis the trade war covid and then the everything bubble but right now it's actually going down but it's slowly trickling up la, yeah at the moment la. yeah so i don't know whether this is actually uh the bottom bottom or it's we haven't reached the bottom yet yeah i think yeah. what uh, do you have another one yes that's actually the last property, one. property yes okay so there's okay so this is actually uh i got this statistic from napic and what's interesting is that this is a 20 years data from yeah. 2001 to 2021 so if you look at the uh volume being transacted right for residential commercial industrial and also agriculture everything has actually been dropping mm -hmm. uh ever since started from i believe it was in 2000 and uh i think it's 11, 15. yes yeah right oh, sorry 2011 yeah everything start to drop i i am not sure why the transaction is dropping maybe because uh at this generation there's not many people actually wants to own yeah property. i think a lot of it is just income inequality yep so yep. now it becomes harder to get in correct the second thing is that in general it's unlikely that you're going to see property booms that you've seen in the past because um, the entire demographic is not doing so Correct. Well. And also there's just too many properties already. Oh, yeah. um, too many properties in, in, in Klang Valley region, uh, that's mm. for sure. Yep. But uh, I think fundamentally, like what, I mean, property is relatively straightforward. You need the right demographics, mm. and then you need the right regulations. Uh. So regulations, uh, I'm not an expert, but some seems quite fine, you know, quite easy to get a house mm. and things like that. Yep. And um, yeah, but the demographics not doing too well. Correct. So, so uh, as a general thing, yeah, you were about to comment something on uh, on the other asset classes, like yeah. Crypto. So yeah. so I think we see this as a hint that the market is could be at the bottom. Now, what is what I think is a much more conservative way to look at things is, um, look, we never know where is the bottom. And not only that, we don't know how long it can stay at the bottom. Mm, right. Yep. Uh, it could take a long time. Yep. Yes. So okay. inflation. Yeah. So yeah, actually this also has something to do with uh, the recession, right? Something yeah. to do with inflation rate also. So if you look at uh, these stats right you can see that it's actually close to like the 10 percent region this is the united yeah. states inflation rate yep. and it's actually almost similar to 1980s uh 1990 uh i believe yeah. 70s, 70s yeah, and, 80s, yeah. yeah and 40s also so all of this is actually signs that tell us that uh although it looks like inflation is like going down right like recent news they they, sh they show that from eight percent to 7.7 but it's, we are still at a kind of at the high peak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's not really like uh, dissolving yet anytime soon. But hopefully, uh, uh, in the next few months, maybe uh, we will see like a slowing down in inflation. But yeah, we shall see like how how is it gonna work out so far. And another news, actually, I just want to share is just that uh, the Fed also has been like showing signs of like they are gonna exercise a slow pace in terms yeah. of interest rate hike. So it's actually a more it's a more positive sign for the stock market actually yeah, yeah because uh, I mean it means that inflation is kind of like transitory that's what they say right yeah but we'll see I mean that's an interesting discussion because we just never know mm. um, like if China already opens back up and then demand starts to surge again inflation might come back mm. right yep. so you just never know yep okay so uh i think this is just yeah. as a conclusion uh. so uh what to do right in this type of environment so now we are seeing there's less participants now yes. uh, in terms of the retail space yes. right but I, this is just what's happening at present so what is going to happen in the future i mean we've seen this type of uh trend actually happen in the past also in 2008 yeah. also when everything's booming, right? And also we see this also the same in the dot-com bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also when everything's like going up and then there's a lot of retail participation. So right now everybody's gone already. Uh, 
but because they are gone, right? They don't, because that's the reason why, because they don't know where is the opportunity, is it? Yeah, they are actually pretty lost. They don't know what yeah. to invest in. And they don't know whether is it time to wait or is it time to buy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, is this, uh, so what are your takes on this? Yeah, yeah actually. Yeah, I think uh, you need to look at a lot of other stuff uh, to decide whether or not we are at the bottom. Hmm. Uh, I wouldn't say that conclusively we are at the bottom right now just because there are people participating less. I would say that it is an indication that the beginning of the bottom has begun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right? Yep. Um, I think that's true, right? Because once participants don't go or get out or a big chunk of them get out, then you know that speculation is going to be a lot less. Mm. Now, the question is when will it start to rebound? And typically it requires some sort of catalyst for the market in general to go back up, right? And then only the participant starts to come back, right? Why the participants are leaving is because they've lost money or whatever, or maybe, you know, recession's coming and they need money, they need to sell, et cetera, et cetera. So what will get these people who have been burned in 2020 and 2021 to get back in, in the next one year, two years, that's what you have to figure out. Mm. And I would say that the next bull run that's going to happen is not going to be as big as the 2020, 2021. Yep. Because it was a very unique special event. And it's going to also take a big while to reverse the psychology of um, people who lost a lot of money in 2021. So we know, for example, in Malaysia, right, 1997 was a big moment for Malaysians because uh, of the crisis and a lot of people lost a lot of money. In fact, there are many people up to today if you say, do you want to invest in stocks? They go back to those period of that phobia to justify why they shouldn't be in the stock market. Mm. And I would suspect that a lot of people will look at 2020 and 2021, especially those who held on to gloves or some tech stocks and say that, well, this is why I shouldn't be in the market. Mm. Right, in fact, we've heard of, I've heard of I've many friends right, who, you know, uh, say that the Malaysian market is bad because they lost money on gloves. And then they go to US. Yeah, they go to US <laughs> and they lose more money. <laughs> so I think that's what you need to know as far as the psychology is concerned, right? But you have to understand that in the market, there's the psychology and the fundamentals component. So you need to analyze both. If both the psychology is at an all time low, but the fundamentals are starting to pick back up and going to do better, then Okay, great. Mm. But what we are seeing now uh, is that the fundamentals themselves are also not really doing well. They're not like, as on the US side, they are not actually in a contraction, but they are in uh, almost like stagnant. Mm. Not much is happening. In Malaysia, we are in a mini contraction. Uh, China is in a contraction business-wise. Mm. So um, these are the two components you need to, to weigh. Now the psychology part has looked based on this video, looked a lot more positive. And by that, we mean negative because we know psychology, there's a reverse when people are, you know, it's the buy low, sell high, right? When people are fearful, be greedy. When people are greedy, be fearful. Right now, people are fearful, but that is insufficient for you to make an investment. Mm. Yep, yep. Okay, thanks for the insight. Okay, yep. I think that's about it for today's video. Yes. So I hope you guys learn a little bit uh, more whether this is a signal of a bot market bottoming. Uh, or not yeah. and i hope you guys benefited from today's sharing so if you enjoy this type of video make sure you smash the like and subscribe button follow us on our social media uh, facebook instagram telegram all the links are in the description below and we'll see you in the next video see you guys